fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am still there! The two men who rode the trail toward Flint Rock were seemingly an ill-mated pair. Barry Allen, the younger of the two, was a quiet type of man, while his companion, Alabama Bates, heavy set and jovial looking, talked incessantly, in spite of the fact that a good deal of his drawling conversation was unheeded by the man who rode at his side. Yep, like I was telling you the other day, Barry, you ought to have something planned for your future. Being young and strong as you are, you could go a long way if you just put your mind to it. You don't have to take my advice, you don't have a mind to, but I reckon I've been around a heap longer than you have. Seems I should... to me we should be getting close to Flint Rock. What do you think, Alabama? Huh? Oh, yeah. Now, seeing as how you've got that girl who's supposed to be waiting for you somewhere near Flint Rock... You take too much for granted, Alabama. There's no romance mixed up in the future I'm planning. But look here, Barry, just a minute. No, now. you listen a minute. All right, all right, I'm listening. I don't believe in telling everybody my business. So I didn't say any more than I did to you about that Lou girl. Well, I gotta admit, you never did talk much, Barry. Jane's father, old Frank Lou, owns the Bar L Ranch near Flint Rock. I worked for him as a cowpoke. When he found out Jane favored me, he fired me. Why, the ornery old coyote. He said Jane was going to marry somebody who amounted to something, and not a penniless cowpoke like me. So I set out for the gold fields in Colorado, where I met you. When the claim fizzled out, I decided to come back here where it was easy to get my kind of work to do. You wanted to trail along with me, so that's that. I'm as broke now as I was when I went away eight months ago. You don't aim to go courting Jane? No. It's no use. We'll get jobs on one of the other ranches near Flint Rock. Like as not, Jane's got another bow by now. One with money. Your father would see to that. Yeah, come on, let's get a move on so as we can reach Flint Rock by sunset. Come on, get up there. Get along. Frank Lou, Jane's father, was a widower and a well-to-do rancher. One evening, he entered the ranch house and... Hi, Jane. I'll be ready soon, Dad. Good, I'm plenty hungry. Have you and Harvey Evans set a date yet, Jane? Set a date? 
You're rather rushing things, Dad. I haven't promised to marry Harvey yet. Well, it's about time you did. He's been coming to see you right steady lately. Yes, I know. Oh, I like Harvey, but Harvey's I... Harvey's got a nice ranch of his own and money in the bank. I'd like to see you married to someone like him. But there's lots of time for that. I want to be sure before I marry anyone, Dad. Well, you said you liked him a minute ago. Yes, but liking and being in love are two different things. Oh, fiddlesticks. You thought you were in love with that no-good cowpoke, Barry oh. Allen. Where would you have been if you'd married him? Let's not talk about Barry, Dad. Someday you might have reason to change your mind about him. <laughs> not a chance. If you mean you think he'll make a strike up north and come back rich, you're mistaken. How can you be so certain? I'll tell you how. Because he is back, and broke as ever. And working with a friend that came back with him over at the Allison Ranch. Got in several days ago. Barry's back? Are you sure? Yep. Allison told me himself that Barry was working at his ranch, and what's more, I saw the young upstart going into the cafe in town with that friend of his yesterday. I, I see. But you can forget about him. Harvey Evans is the right sort of fellow for you. He'd be coming here to see you tonight. Told me to tell you. Now, let's have supper. I'm starving. What? I don't want to eat right now. And when Harvey comes, please tell him I have a headache and can't see him tonight. Hmm. Still thinking about that Barry Allen. It'll be up to Harvey to see that she forgets about that no good Waddy once and for all. People knew very little about Harvey Evans. He had come to Flint Rock about six months before with ready cash to buy a ranch and put money in the bank. The ranch had seemingly prospered from the beginning. Outside of cultivating a friendship with Frank Lou and Jane, Harvey kept pretty much to himself. That night, after learning that Jane wouldn't see him and after a talk with her father, Harvey Evans rode to his ranch. Putting his horse away, he called his foreman, Blackie, into the ranch house for a talk. Come in. Come on in. Sit down, Blackie. What's the matter, Harvey? You look sore about something. I am sore. Jane Lou wouldn't see me tonight. She said she had a headache. Well, maybe she did. She didn't have until her old man told her that cowpokes used to go with Barry Allen on his back, working at the Allison Ranch. <laughs> so that's it. And from what I heard, she used to be in love with him. So you sure do have something to worry about. You shut up. With Allen out of the way, I could have soon persuaded Jane to marry me, since her father's all for it. He's the richest rancher in this territory, and Jane's his only daughter. If I can get to marry Jane... I suppose I... the old man might have an accident before long if you did, and then you'd be in the money, eh? Maybe. But with that cowpoke Barry Allen back here... I I'm... saw him in town with a friend of his. Hombre, he calls Alabama. Yeah, I know. Well, what are you planning to do, Harvey? I want you to go to town and bring Tex out here from the cafe where he works. He's got a draw sort of like that Alabama uses. I got a look at him and Barry Allen both in town. And when you both get back here, we'll figure out a plan. I'll get your horse and see if you can find Tex. I'll be waiting for you to get back. That same evening, Toto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, had gone to town after supper for certain supplies that were needed. He returned to the camp they shared in the hills near Flint Rock and dismounted. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Take you long, Toto. Well, it, it not far to town. Moon plenty bright. Uh, Kimasabi. Yes? Me hear two men talk. It sound like them plan something. Really? Tell me about it. Well, me go to hitch rack to put supplies in saddlebags. Scout have pebble, cotton, hoof. While me bend over to take pebble out, two men come to get their horses. Them not see me. Huh? Go on. Them talk while them get ready to mount. Me listen. Hear what them say. Easy there. You ready to ride, Tex? Yeah, I reckon so, Blackie. But what's this all about? What's your boss want to see me for? Did he tell you? He said you're the Omri can help you because you look something like someone and you got to draw. Oh, sounds like he's planning to pull the fast one on somebody. Sure. But you get paid plenty for what you do, so don't worry. Yeah. And let's get going. Steady, boy. Yeah. I'm ready. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Them right out, other end of town. Me come right back to camp. Mm. 
From the little you overheard, it does seem that they're plotting against someone. Oh, uh, did you get a look at them, Tonto? Me not get good look. Me keep down so them not see me. Me see them from back as them right way. One heavy set, other slim. I see. I'm curious about them, Tonto. It's uh, bright enough for us to follow a trail, isn't it? Ah, we find out where men ride, maybe? Yes. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Won't take us long. Big fellow. Easy, Scout, easy. Mon Silver! Come on, Scout! An hour later, after finding the trail left by Blackie and Tex, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reigned to a stop at the entrance to Harvey Evans Ranch. Oh, Silver. Oh, Silver. Yes, the ranch house is lighted. If we could get to a side window, we might find out more. Harvey Evans lives here. Ah, there are clump of trees not far from house. Maybe we leave horses there. Yes, we can do that. And approach the house on foot. Ah. All right, let's go. Come on, sir. Come on, Scott. A few minutes later, the masked man and Indian had left their horses in the clump of trees and were moving cautiously toward a side window of the house. You'll have to be careful, Tonto. Uh, wait. Some cowboys come from bunkhouse. Yes. And in this bright moonlight, they might... Get to the horses quick, Tonto. Run. We hurry. Soon them get their horses. The bullets came close. All right, here we are. Hurry. Easy, big fellow. Easy, Scott. Easy. Come on, Scott. It was easy for the Lone Ranger and Tonto to outdistance the cowboys who had mounted at the corral and tried to follow them. The masked man and Indian used various means of cunning to cover their tracks and after a time reached their camp without mishap. Oh, Scott. Oh, Scott. Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Sorry we didn't get a look at the men inside the ranch house, Tonto. I'd like to have been certain those were the men you heard talking to Evans. Ah. Well, we'll turn in for the night. Tomorrow you can go to town and keep your eyes open. We might be overly suspicious. All right, let's get some sleep. Meantime, at Evans Ranch, Harvey Evans was inside with Blackie and Tex. For a time, they discussed the excitement that had taken place a short time before. Who do you think it was the men saw snooping outside? That's just what I'd like to know. Blackie, you weren't talking too much in town, were you? No, nobody heard me speak to Tex at all. Guess it might have been somebody thinking they could pull a robbery here, Harvey. Well, the cow folks said one of them was masked. They had horses waiting in the trees and that they hightailed it away as soon as the shooting started. Yeah, and whoever they were, they were plenty scared, it seems like. They didn't wait to pull their guns, just hit leather and beat it. Well, they got away, and that's that. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Yeah. Now, what's the plan? Just this. Like I've already told you, that hombre Barry Allen, along with his friend Alabama, is riding the range for Allison tonight. Now, at dawn, you and Blackie, wearing bandanas over part of your faces, pull that job I told you about. Blackie's slim like Barry, and you're heavy set like Alabama. Uh-huh. You want folks to think we're them, hmm? Yeah. And be sure to mention their names. You know, you call Blackie Barry, and him call you Alabama. Mm -hmm. It'll be easy. After that, cover your tracks and come back here. I'll be in town to get the reaction and to play up that it was them two now, you see? Yeah. Besides, we ought to get plenty of money out of that job. That's right. And it'll be split three ways. Now, do this right, both of you. <laughs> After tomorrow... Barry Allen will never have a chance to come between me and Jane Lou. He'll be done for, and plenty. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The following morning at dawn, Tex and Blackie waited behind some large boulders a few miles out from Flint Rock. That express stage from Pecos ought to be coming along any minute now. Yeah, and he usually carries gold from the Pecos bank to be shipped on the railroad from Flint Rock. Oh, that means there'll be a guard riding on the boot with a driver. Yeah, I reckon so. But we'll take him by surprise. Just start shooting when we ride out from hiding. Right. Hey, listen. I think I hear it coming now. Yeah. 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 Face that handkerchief on your face so they won't recognize us. I'm ready. And be sure to call me Barry, and I'll call you Alabama. Now let's mount steady, right. boy. Yeah. They're getting close. All right. Let's go and start throwing lead right away. Get up! Get up! you up there on the boot. Throw down the money box. Sure, sure. Hold your fire, mister. Uh, I'll throw it down to you. Now hurry it up, then. Steady, boy. The hey, Alabama, you keep in cover while I look inside the coach. All right, Barry. I got my gun ready. If ain't any passengers in the coach, you can look if you want to. I won't waste time looking, then. Get that money box down here pronto. Maybe a bit of lead will hurry him up, Barry. You think I ought to. No, I'll he's be... getting it, Alabama. There's the money box. Hey, good. Now, get that stage moving away from here. Go on, hurry. Sure, sure. Get on, get there. And don't get turn on. around, either. <laughs> oh, you sure scared stiff, Blackie. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was afraid he'd get shot like the guard. Well, <laughs> let's get the money box and head back to the ranch. <laughs> About an hour later, the usual curious crowd was gathered at the stage stop, waiting for the stage to arrive. Well, there it comes. Hey, sure traveling fast. Something seems to be wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, whoa, we were held up. The guard shot. Somebody help me get him down. Let's help get the guard from the booth. Looks like he's unconscious. Take it easy now. We got to get him to a doctor right away. He's up. There he is. Put him down here. Yeah. Hey, hey, what's the matter here? Let me through. It was a hold up there. They come out shooting. A bullet hit the guard before we knew what was happening. They got the money box. Uh, well, let me see how bad he's hurt. There's nothing you can do for him, Sheriff. It's too late for a doctor, man. The guard's dead. Hey, what's the matter, Sheriff? Oh, morning, Evans. Stage was held up to kill the guard. What? Kill the guard, you say? That's right. They'll hang for this if we get him. How many were there, Jim? Well, there was there was two of them. Get a good look at them? No, they had bandanas covering part of their faces. Just about where did it happen? At Sawtooth Hollow. They come out from those big boulders there. Well, I'll get a posse and try to trail them. Oh, wait, wait, just just a minute, boys. Now look, driver, didn't they talk and all? Well, yeah, they seems they did a little talking. I was so excited well, I think came... now, think a minute. Didn't they speak to each other? Maybe mention a name or something like that? Come to think of it, I did hear them call each other by name. What names? One called the other Barry, and he used the name uh, Alabama. Yeah, I remember now. Jumping catfish, Sheriff. They slipped up when they spoke to each other like that. What do you mean? I can't say as I recall any Barry or Alabama around here. Because they haven't been here but a short time. Now, uh, I'd say it could be Barry Allen and his friend Alabama Bates. Both working at Allison's place only since last week. Hey, I met them two at the cafe once. Yeah, that's right. They've been in a couple of times. Sure they have. Now, now wait a minute, man. Uh, tell me, Jim, how were those two set up? How did they look to you? Well, uh, the one called Barry was sort of lean and slim. Uh, the other one was heavy set. Yep, that's just the way they look, Sheriff. I saw them in town a couple of times. And hombre, Barry Allen went to find gold up north, but come back broke a week ago. The other one was with him. Them two, right. all right. You'll save a lot of time by just going out to the Allison Ranch and grabbing them if they haven't skipped out already. Hey, yeah, let's go Come get them. We ought to string them up. If they think they got away with it, they'll still be there. Right. All right, all right. I'll deputize all of you as a posse. We'll go out to the Allison place and get the men you mentioned. That's a talk, Sheriff. But remember, no funny business. What do you mean? We don't have actual proof against them yet. 
Now, let's go. All right, come on. A short time later, Tonto, who had been in town and who had seen and heard everything that happened, reigned to a stop at the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Tonto told the masked man what had taken place. Hmm. Heaven seems certain the outlaws had used names at the time of the holdup. Strange, too, that he was in town so early. That's right. Now then, get young Barry Allen, friend. Crowd plenty mean. For the time being, the sheriff will protect them. Here, Silver. Hmm. Where we go? We we'll ride to the place where the stage was stopped, Tonto. Then we'll try to pick up the trail of those killers and follow it. Is that a big fella easy? Let's hurry. There's no time to lose. That's right. Come on, Silver. Let's start. Barry and Alabama were found at the Allison Ranch and brought to the jail at Flint Rock. Leaving a guard at the jail, the sheriff and one of his deputies went to a nearby restaurant to eat. They were discussing the capture. That was sure quick work, Sheriff. Getting those two killers. Sooner or later, we can make them tell what they did with the money they stole. Yes, sir. Guess they did it all right. <clears throat> They were riding the range alone last night. They could have had time to go wait for the stage with, without anyone being the wider. They swore they just got in from the range when we found them at Allison's bunkhouse. Mm -hmm. But they fit the description the driver gave, and they got the names he heard him say. Barry and Alabama. Hey, they must have hid the money box somewhere. Yeah. No... <clears throat> I was plenty worried bringing them here. Mm -hmm. Men in the posse were in a mighty bad mood. Yeah, I know. Hi, Sheriff. Jane and me have been looking for you. She insisted on coming in to see you when we heard the news. Good well, morning, Frank. Uh, howdy, Miss Jane. Sheriff, it, it can't be true. Why, Barry Allen wouldn't do such a thing. Now, now, no use being upset. Looks like an open and shut case again, as far as I can see. Oh, no. I always told Jane that young Allen never amounts anything. Of course, I never thought he'd pull anything like this. But Dad, I know Barry so well, he would never... <laughs> Great day, what's that? There's something wrong up the street. We'd better get out there quick. Come on. Sheriff! Sheriff! Sheriff, the crowd broke into the jail. They got the two prisoners and they're fixing the lynch them. Stop them. Don't let them do it, Hell, Sheriff. Come on. Let's go. Hurry up. Here comes the come sheriff. On. He'll try to stop us. Too late for that. Now we got him and we'll hide. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Hold on there. Let me through let here. Let the sheriff through here. Look out there. Let him sheriff, don't let him hang us. We didn't do it. I swear we didn't. Take it oh. easy, Barry. If this is it. I reckon we got to face it. Barry? Oh, Barry. Jane. Jane, you believe me, don't you? We didn't hold up that stage, honest. Jane, you're coming away from here with me. Come along. Dad, do something. Please. Now, hold on, hold on, all of you. I'm sheriff here. First one that starts any hanging will get a bullet. Wait, yeah, take it easy, sheriff. I've got a gun at your back. He says you aren't going to interfere. That's no, no, she I mean what I said, sheriff. I'll take your guns. Now, you stand on one side. All right, boys, go on with your plan. Here are the ropes. We can string them up on this tree here. Get busy, man. No, no, wait. You can't do this. Come on, boys. You can't. Hey, look, a mass somebody in an Indian. Oh, 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 if you'll listen a minute, I'll prove Keep your... Keep men and don't listen to them. Let's hear what the masked man has to say. Sure, yeah. Those men you have there are innocent. We can prove that the two killers are the men we have here with us. What's Why, that's a lie. I won't let you interfere. I'll... No, you won't. Oh, hey, my wrist. Did you see that quick draw? Well, Evans asked for it. Well, let's listen to what he has to say. Listen, what is... These two men are the killers. The money they took from the stage money box is in their saddlebags. But how can I know you're telling the truth, stranger? Maybe you and the Indian are Did just... Did you trying... try to follow the trail of the outlaws in the place where the stage was held up, Sheriff? Uh, well, no. We but... followed that trail. My wrist. No, they tried to cover it up by riding a mile or two in the creek. My Indian friend picked it up again. And it led to the Evans Ranch. You can go check on that yourself. No, that, that's not true. Anyhow, I don't know anything about it. I was in town early this morning. Yes, you were here. To be sure, the driver gave certain information. 
that would lead the sheriff to Barry Allen and his friends. Hi, Thunder. Evans did sort of do the questioning that got the driver to identify those two as the outlaws. Somebody go see if the money's no saddleback. I'll see. Yep, it's here, all right. Last night, two men were overheard saying that someone wanted them to pose as someone else. We trailed them to Evans' ranch. Evans was the one who put us up to it. He's to blame as much as we are. Barry's in his way with Jane Lou. And he even figured on killing off her old man to get his money after he married Jane. And that's the truth. Let me show him. Yeah, yeah. So you claimed all that, eh, Evans? If that wrist of yours wasn't hurt... Oh, wait, wait, let me explain. Listen, Jane, I... You crook. Oh, Dad, I knew Barry wouldn't do such a thing. You almost signed your own death warrant by wanting me to marry Evans instead of Barry Allen. And just for money. Yes, Mr. Lou. Think that over for a while. Maybe now you'll forget about wanting your daughter to marry for money. Perhaps you'll see Barry in a different light. Let's go, Tonto. We'll be on our way now. All right, men. Release them two fellas, Barry and his friend. And get those ornery crooks, Evans, Blackie, and Tex to the jailhouse. That masked man showed them up for what they are. He showed them easy, Sheriff, you know. How come you let that masked hombre ride away? Well, I've been thinking. I heard him call that horse Silver, the Indian Tonto. And then, with that mask and all... Well, I figured out that he's the Lone Ranger. Lone oh, This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 